The AC football team put a new twist on an old adage last weekend in Alabama. I'm Sharni Morosky. And I'm Grant Boone. Let's see if I have this straight. If at first you don't succeed, Troy, Troy, Troy again. again. All right, after two close losses, a huge win for the Wildcats over an FBS opponent, no less. We'll discuss right now on the Ken Collins Show. Welcome to week four of the Ken Collins Show from the JMC Network Studios on the campus of Abilene Christian University. I'm Grant Boone, joined by ACU junior Sharon Nemorowski and the head coach of the ACU football Wildcats, Ken Collins, celebrating a birthday this week. 42. <laughs> you got to feel a little older than 42 after three straight nail biters, don't you? 42, yes. It, it, it does uh, catalyze those, uh, those years. The, oh. the fourth quarters we're playing are wow. brutal, but hey, they're fun. You're down... 14 points in the second half last Saturday night. You're down two running backs in the second half, and yet you find a way to knock off FBS member Troy. How'd your team do it? Well, they just, they never gave up. You know, our guys are fighters. They got big hearts. I tell them all the time, you're fighters, you're overcomers. It doesn't matter what is in front of you. Knock it out of the park. And it may, it may be that you chip away at it little by little. We talk about that all the time. But ultimately, ultimately you're bigger than the task at hand. Uh, but you need to bond together and play well, and that's exactly what we did in the second half. Mm. All right, Coach, coming off such a great win, how do you plan to carry that starting conference play? Well, you have to have good practices. You know, everybody can rah-rah and celebrate and all that, but the bottom line is where the work is done is on the practice field, and, and it's got to be clean. It's got to be smooth. Uh, you're going to show them different looks. You're going to make practice as hard as you can uh, for these guys, and you may have to fuss at them, you, may, you know, to get the best out of them, but the bottom line is if you practice well, you can walk out on that field on Saturday and feel really good about your chances of executing well. Now, whether you win the game, a lot of times that depends on the other team and how good they are, but uh, I feel like if we, take, if we take our momentum, which we are, we've had great practices all week, great weather. I mean, it's, it's raining outside, so our, <laughs> our big guys are skipping across campus right now. They're so happy. So, uh, you know, we'll go out and we'll have good practices, and we should play a, a solid game on Saturday. Well, we will talk about that game coming up later today against Incarnate Word. It's the Southland Conference opener, not just for the two teams, but for the entire Southland Conference. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but when we come back, we will look back and recap and analyze a win for the ages, the 38-35 victory over Troy. Stay with us on The Ken Collins Show. Welcome back to The Ken Collins Show. 39 years to the night after its only other meeting with Troy, the ACU football team took on the Trojans last Saturday in South Alabama, happily with similar results. With a look at the highlights, here's Daniel Zapata. The Wildcats took on FBS opponent Troy in a game that would go down in ACU football history. A rain delay would push the start of the game back an hour, but that wouldn't affect Herschel Sims as he was effective running the ball early on, finishing with 20 carries for 96 yards. The Wildcats struck first as Parker McKenzie finds Monte Green Avery on a 12-yard pass to put the Wildcats up 7-0 early on. Towards the end of the first quarter, Silvers connects with running back Brandon Burks for 53 yards to set up the first and goal from the ACU nine yard line. On second and goal, Silvers would keep it himself for the five yard run into the end zone to tie things up at seven to end the first quarter. The conversion would lead to a Trojan touchdown as Silvers would keep it again on the one yard run to give the home team a 14 to seven lead. McKenzie and the offense would take over, but not for long as an interception gives the ball back to Troy at the ACU 11-yard line with just two minutes left in the first half. Silvers and the Trojans would capitalize on a third and 11 as this 12-yard pass to Burks would give Troy a comfortable 21-7 lead going into halftime. The Wildcats would take over in the second half as McKenzie finds Monte Green Avery for a 49-yard completion to set up the first and goal from the three-yard line. 
The score would be cut to 21 to 14 on the ACU reversal as Demarcus Thompson trots into the end zone to bring ACU closer. The ACU defense would continue to play big in the second half as linebacker Justin Stevens stops the run and forces Troy into a third and two situation. But Troy wouldn't go away easily as Silvers connects with Chandler Worthy for a 42 yard completion, setting up the first down at the ACU 11. Trojans running back Kari Franklin would score on an 11 yard run, pushing the Troy lead back up 28 to 14. The Wildcats would answer back in a hurry as a sideline pass to Cedric Gilbert results in a 63-yard touchdown to cut the score to 28-21 Troy with eight minutes left in the third quarter. The momentum would shift towards ACU after the secondary would come up big with a broken pass on third and five giving the ball back to ACU. After a 20-yard pass completion to DeAndre Brown, McKenzie would find Brown again as he finds the hole for a 47-yard run up the middle to tie things up in Alabama with less than two minutes left in the third quarter. McKenzie and the offense would drive down the field and set up a 27-yard field goal by Nick Grau that would give ACU a 31-28 lead with six minutes remaining in the game. The Wildcats would take over again on offense and would score on a nine-yard rushing touchdown by Adrian Duncan to push the ACU lead to 10, 38-28, with just over a minute left in the game. Troy would move into the red zone after a 49-yard bomb is completed to set up a first and goal. The Trojans would score on Burke's third touchdown of the game to give ACU just a three-point lead with seconds remaining. The Wildcats only needed to recover the onside kick to secure victory, and after organizing through the chaos, Keith Barnett came up with the ball for ACU, giving the Wildcats the improbable win against a tough FBS opponent on the road. All right, Daniel, thanks. 38-35, what a huge win for ACU. Uh, lightning struck twice, and so the game started an hour later than it was supposed to, and it couldn't have started much better. You allow a six-play, 12-yard drive uh, on defense. You get the ball, you go 11 plays, 85 yards. You couldn't have started any better, could sure. you? Sure. Our, our first three games, we're starting out very clean uh, on offense, getting Parker into a groove, and that's what you want to do with your quarterback. And uh, you know, uh, on Saturday night, we were able to run the ball a little bit on on, uh, on first downs, and that really, really helped. Okay, so let, let's nitpick because Parker's played so well. And yet, for the second straight week, you run into a little bit of trouble in the second quarter. Just coincidence, or is it something that the other team maybe is doing after seeing him live for a quarter? No, I think it's coincidence, and we've just got to get him with play calling. We've got to keep him in his groove. Mm. Uh, they were on similar plays, which is kind of spooky, and, and you can start piecing some things together, or you can make a big deal about it when it's really not. And ultimately, ultimately, Parker makes tons of decisions in a game, and every now and then he's going to try to he's going to try to force the ball. We've got to get him out of that. Three career starts, two have been on national television at an FBS school, uh, and yet he's come out of there with That's right. and with played, offensive and played, played really well. Oh, he really yeah. has. And yet you go down at halftime 21 to 7. What were you telling your team? Well, you know, everybody's pretty dejected being down 21 to 7 because it should have been 14 to 7. Uh, we should have just run the ball. We, we threw an interception on third and 24. Mm. And you shouldn't do that. You don't, you don't put your defense and your team in that, in that spot. So as a head coach, I should have been on, on the headset going, hey, Nathan, let's run the ball here. I was, actually, I was chewing on an official a little bit, so I wasn't, I wasn't focused probably mm. on what I should have been uh, focused on uh, you know, at that time, and we end up trying to force it. So you know, going down 21-7, everybody's dejected. You don't like finishing a half like that. Just naturally, you're going to be down. But what I told them at, at the halftime is this. You know what? I don't know what's going to happen in the second half, but 21 points is not going to beat us. <laughs> so we're going to go out. We're going to score some points. And you did. You scored on five of six possessions in the second half. The only one you didn't was a tip ball interception. You go on a 24 nothing run. Your defense holds them to four straight punts. They only get 50 yards over the course of four straight possessions, all of which ended with a punt. Your team takes the lead, 
you're in the closing three minutes of the game, and that takes us to our play of the game. You decide on fourth and four to line up for a field goal with Nick Grau, your sophomore place kicker. Parker McKenzie's been the holder all year, and you run the fake, and you get a pass interference call, which extends the drive. Sure. You know, we we this was a total team effort, offense, defense. To get the thing turned around, you make plays on offense, you get stops on defense, and then comes your special teams. And we practiced this all the time, and it was just the right time to call it. And, and you told me earlier that because of Nick's ability and the other team knowing that he could make a 47-yarder, that was part of it, wasn't it? The guys made 12 field goals in a row. So uh, it, when having a quality field goal kicker, that sets up a fake in and of itself. If you're... If you don't feel confident enough in your field goal kicker, people will know that. And people will, hey, let's, let's back off a little bit and let's look for the fake. But they, they fully believed that he, that he was fixing to hit that thing right down the middle. You get the pass interference call, and then you go in with Adrian Duncan, who ran the ball 36 times last year, had a couple of touchdowns in what some would say was mop-up duty or garbage time. Didn't seem like it. It seemed like a guy who was well prepared. Yeah, last year he got carries. What he what he did last year was preparing him for what he's about to go through this year. And great guy. He's ready to go. And uh, we'll use some different guys back there, but he'll be our lead guy. Well, it was a great win for your team. ACU's first win over an FBS opponent since 1959. Haven't played very many in the last 50-some-odd uh, years, but a big win over Troy. When we come back, Sharon Nemirovsky will get up close. She'll go toe-to-toe. -to -toe with sophomore kicker Nick Grau, and we think you'll get a kick out of it. I know that Shara got a kick out of it. But as we go to break, <laughs> let's take a look at scores from around the Southland Conference. Last week, you'll see that Southland Conference teams are in gold, and it's brought to you by University Park Apartments. After Saturday's victory, we were reminded the difference a field goal can make in a game. I caught up with ACU kicker Nick Grau and even learned how to kick a field goal. That first one of the season, you had some big plays during the game. Yeah, um, we played really well. We came out and did what was needed to be done. Uh, yeah, the field goal helped within the end, but that fake field goal was the game changer. And so what was your mind going into that? I know I was up there with Grant. None of us saw that coming. Oh, I, I knew that the defense was like, oh, they have no idea what's about to happen. And fortunately, we got the penalty called and that eventually sealed the game. How was last year? As a freshman, you made a huge impact for this team. Yeah, it was nerve wracking. I was really nervous and uh, I don't know, it was just a different experience coming from high school straight yeah. to college. Talk about your journey coming to ACU. Now you have a new support system, hopefully, with yes. Coach and all that. Um, I like it here. I love it. Uh, I knew this place was different, so that's why I chose it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it also gave me the opportunity to do what I do best. All right. Speaking of what you do best, you're going to teach me how to kick a field goal. Yes. So let's go do that. Right. You're going to want to aim for right here. Okay. You're going to want to strike down on it like a golf swing. Okay. And follow through right through the middle of the pipe. Follow through. And it's good. I'll stick to co-hosting, he'll stick to kicking. For Nick Grau, I'm Sharon Murat. E. I'm sure we can expect another record season from Nick. And while ACU gained its first win of the season, here's Hannah Little with more ACU sports. Thanks, Shara. The ACU soccer team wrapped up its non-conference schedule with a 5-1 win over UT Pan American last Friday in a 2-0 loss to the number seven team in the nation, Texas Tech, on Sunday. Playing good teams has sophomore defender Kelsey Roberts confident going into Southland Conference play this weekend. Just coming up from Division One from last year, we've played these teams before, so it feels like, so we know kind of their strategy, their styles. So we'll be prepared, um, but coming off the preseason, we played some pretty hard teams. The ACU volleyball team got some face time Tuesday night as the match against the Big 12 team Texas Christian University was televised on Fox Sports Southwest. TCU was able to take the win for the first two sets, while the Wildcats came back and defeated the Horn Frogs in the third set, 25-19. The Wildcats couldn't hold the Frogs again as TCU came back and won the fourth set. Junior Jenny Lurch led the team with 18 kills, alongside junior libero Madison Hoover, who led the team with 15 digs. 
More stiff competition awaits the Wildcats this weekend in Lubbock when the team competes in the Lone Star Showdown against Texas Tech, Air Force, and Weber State in the final matches before conference play next week. The women's cross country team took third place last weekend in Lubbock at the Texas Tech Open. In unseasonably cool conditions, Isabella Gutierrez was ACU's highest finisher, placing 10th out of 113 runners. The men's team took seventh, led by senior Daniel Block, who was more than three minutes faster than his time in last year's race. Last year, I really didn't have a great race in Lubbock. It was my second cross-country race ever, and we were still kind of learning how to properly run a cross-country race, for me at least. And this year, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot faster, a lot stronger. Three minutes is a big difference over five miles, so I was really happy with that. For the tennis team, junior Nata Marjanovic won the singles title and doubles title, along with sophomore partner Ansley Borman at the home tournament last weekend. I think we had really great energy and again we got to play against Whitney and Carly in the finals and you know just getting out there against fellow friends and competing and just getting out there trying to see who could get that next ball, the next shot and it was really fun and I felt really great out there because I've been working on fitness and tennis and uh, it was just really nice to see some results come out of it. For the men's team, a new and rising face, Paul Domanski, won in singles and competed with junior Brandon McCarty and sophomore Andrew Hutchinson in doubles. Thanks for watching the JMC Network Sportscast. I'm Hannah Little. Thanks, Hannah. When we come back, we'll discuss how the Wildcat football team can cage the Cardinals this afternoon. As we welcome you back to the Ken Collins Show, take a look at today's schedule around the Southland Conference. And you'll note there are no other Southland Conference games today, Southland against Southland, except for ACU versus Incarnate Word. So coach, it's not just your teams uh, having their Southland Conference openers, you and Incarnate Word. It's the, the opener for the entire league. It's gonna be on TV. It's a big day, isn't That's it? That's right, we're on Southland TV this afternoon. So, uh, you know, we're on the stage again, so we're fired up about it. Somebody's gonna be one and oh and lead the league. That's right. By themselves. Let's talk about ACU versus Incarnate Word, the Cats and the Cardinals. They've only been playing football since 2009. They have a nice, small stadium right on campus there in San Antonio. This, of course, is, is going to be a game played at Shotwell Stadium. We've been playing them since 2010. We've won four of the five matchups. They got you down there last year late. It was the second time you had played. They suffered a really bad break, literally and figuratively, when they lost their quarterback, Trent Britton, a guy who started every game last year, third drive of the season. He breaks his ankle. He's gone for the rest of the year. They scored touchdowns, or rather field goals, on their first two drives mm -hmm. with him. They've only scored 10 points since. I know there's no uh, feeling sorry for an opponent, but you can empathize, can't you, with what Larry Keenan's dealing with down there? Exactly right. That happened to me in 03. And, and if, you do, if you can't manage and you don't have your other guys ready and they're not ready to step in, they're going to struggle a little bit, and it's going to hold you back all season. And that, for the most part, that's what's happening to them so far. How big of a loss is Britton because of what he can do, not just with his arm, but he can move a little bit? Well, he's the heart and soul of their team, and he is athletic. So when you heat him up, you always have to, uh, you always have to watch out because he'll, he'll run the ball just like he did the, 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 the last touchdown they scored last year uh, to beat us as it was a scramble on his part. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a big, you know, big loss for them. And, and uh, you know, it's a bummer, but you know what? That's why it's a team. It's not an individual sport. they got to get the next guy ready. Yeah. Yep. On the topic of injuries, Herschel's out with an ankle, and DeAndre, he's having issues with his knee. How do you plan on making that up? Well, somebody better <laughs> take the ball and run for touchdowns and, and protect the quarterback. And Adrian Duncan is our guy. Uh, we, we fully trust him. What a wonderful guy. It's, it's really, really hard. I can't stress to, to, to you guys enough. It's really hard being the number three running back and staying honed in and being ready when your number is called because, oh my gosh, there's two, something has to happen to two people for me to get in and be able to finish a game against Troy. Who would have drawn that up? I don't, I don't know that anybody would have, but that, that's just a, a, a testament to, to Adrian's character and his, and his willingness to prepare. Uh, so, you know, he can run the ball, he can catch, he's strong enough to uh, protect. So we trust him in that role and, and we expect him to make plays. Let's look at your offense uh, big picture. Parker McKenzie for the second time in three weeks wins Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Uh, you guys seem to have found your stride, at least how you've finished games the last couple of weeks. 
you're really playing well. This is a defense for Incarnate Word that's given up 200, almost 250 yards per game rushing the football and more than 480 yards in total offense. Uh, how confident are you right now with how your offense is running? Well, we're confident right now just in our ability to play fairly clean for four quarters. Uh, we didn't do that against Troy. Of course, they had something to do with that. Parker always tends to, at least the last two games, have, have a little hiccup there in the second, uh, second quarter. And mm -hmm. uh, we've got to figure out what that is and, and not do that. So for the most part, he's out there throwing strikes. We're able to run the ball here lately, uh, way better than in game one. Mm -hmm. So we're going to rely on that. And it really doesn't matter the numbers of it as far as Incarnate Word's defense. We're going to go in, hey, run, play action, some drop back pass. And, uh, you know, and, and, and the, the better we play, you know, the better chance that, that we're going to the, win the game offensively. Now, flipping the game, as Grant mentioned earlier, their offense has only had 16 points this season. Um, how do you think our defense can maybe show something in this game? Well, I think, I think this. Our defense has played well. They played well last game. Uh, in the second half, I mean, uh, Coach Doolin and his, guy did, his guys did a great job. And that's, that allowed us to get on a roll offensively, too. And that's what kind of created a little bit of panic in Troy. Mm. Uh, when your defense is playing well and can stop the run, and that is the key. And, of course, Incarnate Word's going to, they're going to try to run the ball. you got young quarterbacks. You're not trying to throw the ball every down and throw the ball down the field and have them make a ton of decisions. So they'll take the ball out of their hands a little bit and, uh, and run the ball. And if we can defend the run properly, then we got a good shot. And you'll need to force some turnovers. It's two straight games without forcing a turnover. That's weird, isn't it? Sometimes that? the ball just bounces yeah. weird, That's right. It? And, and we'll get them. And, and I, we're not making a big deal about okay. that. I mean, because, uh, you know what, sometimes quarterbacks force the ball and, and it doesn't get picked. But you know what, sometimes it does. And it all, it'll all even out as long as we're protecting the ball on offense and we've yet to lose a fumble. And I'll be shocked yeah. if, we ever do, if we ever do because that's just – that's just kind of the way that we play. So so will the player who fumbles. He'll be shocked when he sees his your reaction yeah, well, when he comes back to, yeah, the, to the sideline. <laughs> hey, um, th we mentioned the Southland Conference opener. It's ACU's first Southland Conference game officially since the year you were born. Have you made anything, any kind of uh, comments to your team about the fact that this is ACU's first Southland Conference game, or is that the kind of thing you don't even mention? No, you don't mention it. At some point you do, but it, in preparation, you don't mess with any of that because yeah. any distraction, sure. anything to make somebody pause and go, you know what? Let me think about that. No, let's think about let's think about the power play and let's think about how to stop it. Let's think about uh, protecting against blitz. So, those are the more productive things. But to us guys that are a little bit older, you you respect that, and it, and it's kind of a neat situation. Well, I mentioned it was your birthday this week. <laughs> the win against Troy, and certainly a win against. University of the Incarnate Word today would be icing on the cake. I thought the least we could do would be to have a little treat for you today here on the Ken Collins Show. It's your birthday, <laughs> and so if it's your birthday, it can only mean one thing. We have a cake. So Collins going to bring the cake in, and we've got it lit. Well, the, the, the suspense is absolutely it's killing, killing you, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, You're there we go. Me. Birthday cake me, Grant, for Coach so. Collins. It's got the ACU logo <laughs> on it, and that hopefully, hopefully that treat will be just the, the extra bit of sugar and the rush that you need to go into. And, and I need some this. sugar. Yep. Good. And I'm, I'm, I'm mm. shocked. I'm touched. As you can tell. Yeah, I can tell. I'm very, I'm moved greatly. And you're holding back the tears. <laughs> I can see. So this is really good. So this is a good way for us to say. Happy birthday, Coach. In all seriousness, thanks for all you're doing in the lives of these young men for the last three years as head coach and 10 years now at ACU. Uh, I know you know you're appreciated, but in case anyone hasn't told you lately, happy birthday. Thanks for all you do, and go get them out there today. Thanks. I'm happy to do it. All right. That's Coach Ken Collins. Uh, it's his birthday. Maybe just stop by the studio and have a piece <laughs> of leftover cake if there is any. Don't forget the game today. 305. It's on Southland Conference Television, so you check local listings to watch the game in your area. I'll have the pregame show on the ACU Sports Network at 2.30, joined by former ACU coach Bob Strader as the analyst. The icing is choking me up a little bit, or maybe those are <laughs> just the tears from, from the happy birthday wishes. So join us at 2.30 on the radio uh, for the ACU versus Incarnate Word game. For Sharon E. Morosky and for the Coach Ken Columns, the birthday boy, 
I'm Grant Boone. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Ken Collum Show. Enjoy the game at Shotwell today. We'll see you next week. I went this way.